but the joy of loving and the, and the, and the privilege of being able to love. Uh, and then I, I realized how powerful that is. But you don't expect anything back. So when you do get something back, it's always a surprise. So your whole life is full of surprises. If you expect something, you're never surprised, are you? Hmm? And if you don't expect it, you don't get it anyway. But if you just love, and there's no deals, you just, you just, your win is in the, the ability to love. Because most people lose that ability when they're very young. A little child loves. And unconditionally and completely. And then suddenly somebody doesn't receive it. They brush them aside like it's not important, it's just a little kid's love, you know? And their love is rejected and they get hurt terribly for that. They really get hurt. You know, sometimes we forget what it was like as a kid and they really get hurt. So they say, I'll love again, but not so much. Not quite so much. And they, <coughs> they do love again, but not quite so much. And then they get hurt again. Their love is rejected. And then they said, I'll love again, but not quite so much. So that their, their capacity to love keeps reducing as they grow up. As it's not appreciated. So then they, in the finish, they can't love. Because they, they know that love means pain. They've associated love and pain, is it? So when they've got a connection between love and pain, they stop looking, they stop loving and they're looking for someone to love them. Now without that condition of life, where a person is looking for someone to love them, all the ladies' magazines would go broke. Because they're telling you how to make somebody love you. Is that real? Yes. Estee Lauder and Max Factor. They, uh, they, they would all go out of business. Because they're looking for someone to love them. Love me, aren't I beautiful? Haven't I got a beautiful body? Look at my hair, it's got that special stuff in it, you know? <laughs> Look at my body. Look at my skin. <coughs> Why well, they'll even train themselves to walk in a way that they look at my walk, you know? So what they're saying is, I have to find somebody to love me. They've gone beyond loving, and now they've got to find someone to love them. And their whole effort is to get somebody to love them. Would you believe that? Have you ever seen it happen? Yeah. You ever fell into the trap yourself a bit? Yes. Get guys going around to show, look how, how, what a successful guy I am. You know, I've got this Porsche car, and I'm, you know, look at, I'm a real jet setter, and you know, I'm really terrific, you know. I mean, I'm the kind of guy that uh, that you'd want to marry, wouldn't you? Because I'm wealthy, and, and you wouldn't have any money worries, would you? Right? Eh? You wouldn't have any money worries, and uh, uh, and I've got a lovely personality, so I'd always have Sheila's, wouldn't I? So when I go around and I'd always have Sheila's, it, it gives you a lot of freedom, doesn't it? it gives you exactly the case for a lot of freedom. You have lots of money in a nice house. Marry me. What he wants is a cheap house kicker. He's smart. <laughs> if you calculate what it costs to get a housekeeper to do what a wife does, you couldn't afford one on your income. You, know, you realize that's true? Yeah. Not so much true now as it used to be, because a man bucks in and does a few things, you know? But if, if there was a time when that was the man, all he got was a, was a, uh, a contracted housekeeper. Now, I promise to love you, uh, to love and to cherish till death do us part. You know, he gets the girl to do the, say that, and, and, and she does that in, in before God and before the church and before the state, and then he goes out and cuck holds her, you know? But that, that you made that oath. You know, you made that oath. No matter what I do. For better or worse. And it's worse, isn't it? <laughs> it's still love me. No matter what I do, you can love me. And it, it won't stand up. It won't stand up because it's not honest, you know? Because people, they started off on the wrong foot. Love wasn't there to start with. It was a deal. 
Most people get married because the other partner has something that the that partner number two has something that partner number one hasn't got. They've got a nicer personality, they've got a better social ability, they've got more money, they've got uh, something that they haven't got. They've got some skills, you know, uh, that the other hasn't got. So they, they like to get married, but then number one comes along, gets married to number two, duplicates all their skills and ability, and what's the use of them then? They only married them because they've got something he hasn't got or she hasn't got. And I'm not talking about money, I'm talking about character and personality, isn't it? The capacity to love, the ability to be a friend. Lots of people do walk over broken glass just to have somebody that can be a friend. <coughs> have you ever met a lot of people that can be a friend, a real friend? Not many. So they, they, they just, but then when they, they, they're married to the woman that can be a good friend, they find out about how important friendship is and then they can be good. What happens when they can both be good friends, they're happy for the rest of their life. <laughs> You know, that's a good, that's a good, that's the only motivation I can see, whether you're married because you want something from another person that it work. There are so many advantages in understanding friendship. Now, friendship is just love. But it's a different kind of love that a man feels for a woman. I mean, I think when you get older, you've got, like Jen and I, I think we've got, well, I don't think I know, We've got friendship as the basis. But with that friendship, it's an automatic love. It's automatically there. So, but the friendship makes the love say nothing. <coughs> the fact that the love is still there, it will be there until the day I die. It will, until the day that we're separated for, through death. Can you? It'll always be there. And that's not a bad feeling, isn't it? I said to Chad today, I'm going to tell the people of Kenya one day about love. And I'd say, get a picture of the person that you're fond of. What about if we only had one and a half legs? One arm. A horrible growth on the end of their nose. Blind. Halitosis in the breath. <laughs> <laughs> no consciousness of them, either as a spirit or a human. Pure animal. Would your love persist? Would it? Because love belongs to the human. And if the human is not there, there is no love. The child in us loves. If that's not there, there is no love. You can be smart as howdy duty, you can be a really intelligent person, you can be very bright and a genius. But if you've suppressed your human, you don't know what love is. Because the only one to ever teach you about love is the child in yourself. And that's the only thing, the only way you'll ever learn about love. You won't learn about it from a book, and you won't learn about it from Solomon's love songs. You won't love it, you won't love to learn it from any written or published articles. You won't learn it by sex. You may as well say, I could, I could learn about love from a cockroach because they understand sex. They can reproduce quite well, is that? Okay. Or rats. But you don't think they could teach you about love? No, no, the human, the, 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 the human spirit in us, the child in us, right? and the only source of love you'll ever know about love You know, I'm not a Bible batcher, don't you? No? I'm not a Bible batcher. I'm not a religious man. But I've studied the Bible because it's a, it's a pretty good, uh, both the Old Testament and the New Testament. I spent 10 months just on the New Testament with a, with a minister just to find out, you know, to find out. Because I thought, now, anything that's written like that, and so many people believe in it, there must be something in it, you know? There must be survival. So I, I read it like it's a, a book on martial arts. <laughs> on how to live. Not like it's, like it's a religious thing that I've got to believe in. I don't believe in anything. So I studied it and I learned a lot about life. 
but it spoke in parables like turn the other cheek. It doesn't mean if somebody socks you on. Can you imagine if somebody hit me on one side of the cheek, I'd turn the other one? <laughs> but what it does say, that if a person does something wrong to you, if you understand them enough, you know that every man is quite noble and beautiful, but they have something else controlling their mind to make them do something that's not beautiful or noble. Is that right? They've got an identity that comes in and gets them to do something that's unkind. But if you realise God, is, but man himself is quite beautiful. So when you turn the check, is you forgive everybody. There's nothing to forgive, you just understand. A person does something wrong to you, and you understand that it wasn't them. If they hurt you, and, they, and they, you're their friend, and they hurt you, well, it's not them. They're unhappy about hurting you. So you don't, you don't have to make them more unhappy by getting nasty with them. Is that right? Because that part of them that is unhappy because they hurt you, because they were your friend, that's the child. So you've got the child and then you've got the other, the other thoughts that come in there that says, uh, oh, why be you, you know? I did that, you made me do that. I wouldn't have done that to you if you hadn't done that. See, what made me do that is that you did that and you did it three times. After the third time I said, right, you can cop it back, I'll give it to you. That's my justification. Justification, 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 justification. Another word for stupidity. <coughs> Spelled differently. Hmm? There's nothing to justify. You look beyond the appearance of man to the reality. The reality is man is beautiful. And I say man, I mean woman, you know? Woman is man, just different shape. She's both spirits. Both have a child, a child in yeah, They've both got a child spirit. Child fathers. So I, I don't differentiate man and woman. Habit is man. I know who you are, so I can't deny that. I've looked past the appearance of you to who you really are. So if I look at a beautiful park and I see some dog shit, I don't forget the park and just see the dog shit. Would you? Or why do that with people? So I could say that to anyone in the room here. So that if you want to be successful as an executive, if you want to be successful as a man, as a woman, as a, as a wife or a husband, if you want to be successful socially, if you want to be successful in, in, in at being at peace with yourself, and being at peace with yourself is very simple, that you admire the game you're playing, then you're at peace. If you don't admire the game you're playing, you're not at peace. Admiration is the key. Admiration is the key that says you admire, you, you have got self-esteem or you haven't. If you don't admire the, the way you respond to the environment, you are feel inferior. The only way to kill, cure that inferiority is to admire the way you play the game. Then you never have feelings of inferiority and you don't take a back seat and nobody expects you to. Is that real? Because you are the one that advertises who you are. You can fool the mind, but you can't fool the spirit. You can only fool the mind. And sometimes the spirit of a person knows they've got you located, but they don't want to know it consciously, so they put it away and they trick themselves, you know? But they know anyway. And if you try to control someone with a lie, to influence them with a lie or control them with a lie, they'll punish you for it. And they won't even know they're doing it. Unconsciously they'll punish you for it because you're using a lie to control them, to influence them. You're not vulnerable, you're not really honest. What's anything that's vulnerable? If you're vulnerable and you have no fear, no one will hurt you. That's why a little bird can drop out of a tree and you pick it up and worry about it. Now you get it back and, and you know. You ever done things like that? 
It's so vulnerable. And it has no fear. And it still has that God-given ability to love. But they haven't lost it. So you, you immediately look after it. You really want to look after it. You want to do everything you can to, to have it survive. Is that true? Yeah. These are the truths of life. These are the, these are the building blocks of survival. Mind you, it's very strong. And it loves a lot. But then again, I don't protect it. And I don't put it back here. I let it come out and get hurt. And then I'll fix it up again. And it gets stronger and it gets hurt. And I get, fix it up and get stronger. And I let it get hurt again. And I get stronger. But I don't protect it. And it does get hurt. And I fix it up again. But every time I fix it up again, it gets stronger. And if I protect it from getting hurt, it'll remain weak. So being vulnerable is the, is the part of becoming strong. Is that nice to you? overt acts against the human spirit. So you, you, you mightn't care about the body. A spirit is, can, really, can very blase about bodies. They can give it drugs or they elect it or, or do all sorts of things to the body, but the, the, child, the child in you really cares about the body. So if you want to hurt a body, get permission from the child first, which you'll never get. So because the child in you stops you from doing that, and thank the Lord for that child. 
that you have there because that stops you from really doing some stupid things which you're never going to get yourself to. Am I getting to you how important the child is? The other part of you that loves is the child. The spirit doesn't love, it understands. It doesn't love, it just understands. <laughs> 